Gaming now present For the Record. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Neely Cross. This show is taped on Friday. That's one day after the devastating news of at least 13 U.S. service members and more than 100 Afghans killed in an ISIS K attack outside the Kabul airport. Before this show airs Sunday morning, news could well get worse. So please remember that as we break down the politics of what's happening in Wisconsin this week. Veterans are also now coping with a renewed sense of shock, anger, and loss. Contingents of Wisconsin's Republican lawmakers toured Fort McCoy twice in the last few days. The evolving message from the party towards the thousands of refugees who are making their way there is one of fear and questions raised without responsible answers. How many special immigrant visa holders do you think the Taliban are letting into Kabul airport right now? Because we cannot have terror imported into the United States here. On Wednesday, I sat down with an outspoken Republican, former congressional candidate and Afghanistan veteran. His concerns about the message within his own party is one that in part captures rising divisions in how Republicans will welcome these refugees. So I am uh, Jason Church. I'm a retired Army captain, and I grew up in Menominee, Wisconsin, went to uh, undergrad at La Crosse, and I commissioned a lieutenant and went over to Afghanistan in 2012. I was injured in Afghanistan. I lost both my legs below the knee in an IED explosion. And that, in effect, ended my military service. Uh, when I was over there, I was in one of the harshest areas of the country. It's called Panjway. It's near Kandahar. It's where the Taliban really was formed. So there was a lot of local um, uneasiness with, with our presence. And there was a lot of tough situations. Um, and being confronted and seeing death on too consistent of a basis um, made me realize that a lot of these people never understood any bit of an opportunity outside of the world the Taliban gave them. And that changed and formed my perspective on the Afghans as a people and is why I'm taking the positions I'm taking today. Tell me as much as you can about the people, the Afghans that you served alongside. A lot of them are brave people. You know, I remember being in a firefight next to my interpreter, you know, as we hit the ground, you know, and returning fire on the Taliban. And this guy was standing right next to me. He could easily have been shot. Not only could he have died on the battlefield, but because he's from there, people know his family. People know his backstory. So there is a deep belief in a lot of these people in what we promised them. And that, to me, cuts to our nation's integrity. At what point are we as a people going to take responsibility for the messes we create? And I think that we can start by the way we treat the people we promised and failed to deliver with respect. You just heard the Wisconsin Republican message regarding Afghan refugees coming to Fort McCoy. What are you thinking as you listen to that? I appreciated looking at the longer term issues that are potentially come up from um, isolating Afghans as they come here maybe at times overwhelming for them. And I think it's our job and quite frankly, our responsibility. We went to war there, all right? You sent troops there, we sent troops there to take care of the people who come here. One thing that concerns me is if we let ourselves be driven by fear. We cannot let fear be what dictates how we interact with the people who are coming from Afghanistan. I have worked with many of these people. A lot of them wanted nothing more than freedom in their own country. They were willing to die for it. The SIVs I worked with bled with me. They wanted something that they could build for their own children in Afghanistan, and that has been taken away. So if I begin to hear things about fear of these people coming in there, frankly, I don't buy it. There is a play on what's unknown about the vetting process. And there is a specific message here to promote what we don't know instead of also being honest about what we do know. So the people who have SIVs are incredibly vetted because at the be beginning of their process as working as interpreters, we vetted them. And then we vetted them again after they had done their time as interpreters. The bigger question is the greater refugees, the people who, when they saw the Taliban falling, or excuse me, when they saw Kabul falling and the Taliban coming in, who 
grew up from the time that the U.S. first came into Afghanistan to now only understood the Western principles of freedom of expression. So when I see people becoming afraid of the vetting process, understand that they're not just coming here and getting off of the flight at General Mitchell Airport and walking into society. They're still going into the military base. They're still going to have a vetting aspect to that. I mean, that makes sense from a security standpoint, but I don't want the narrative to be driven that these people who are coming here are, are with ill intent. The people who were fleeing, who were holding on to an airplane and falling off of it to leave it, to me that doesn't exactly sound like they're leaving simply because they want to conduct terrorist activities here. They're fleeing for their life. Senator Johnson made a comment. One disaster is all it takes. One thing is all it takes. What happens if we find someone? If someone is vetted, if someone's taken out, whether it's in Qatar or another base, what should we be learning from that? We have had terrorists in our own society. We have had elements of our own society do heinous things, spree killings, random acts of violence. So to assume that a group of people who are coming over here just because we are fighting a war there will assume a, a, a mentality of violence is ridiculous. As you're watching the events in Kabul unfold, who are you texting? Who are you messaging? What are you setting up? Without giving away these people's identities. Now understand, the Taliban has very intricate intelligence networks that will monitor a lot of things. These people are control freaks to the nth degree. So I don't want to reveal people's names. Um, but it is, it's like reliving war again at home to be texting someone I know in real time over there where to go, what to do. I'm trying to talk to somebody I met from from my time in service who has eyes on the ground and we're trying to guide these people in the middle of all of this through this mess. It's re... It's reconfigured to me how personal war is. And so when I'm helping them, when I'm hearing their families struggle, when I'm hearing them flee for their life, run away, go to dungeons, they're, they're scared for their lives. How many people have you been able to get to some measure of safety? I believe we've gotten one. Um, with the fog of everything, I'm not exactly sure. Are there others you think are, you're not going to be able to, are going to be left behind? Unfortunately, yes. How many? Too many. I don't know. When we come back, hear from both one Afghan who is now resettled in Madison and from the veteran group who saved his family stuck in Afghanistan just this week.